Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight in grade 5 in module 4 we are working on lesson number 7. And that means that we are solving word problems involving the volume of rectangular prisms with whole number edge lengths. So let's take a look at a couple problems from tonight's homework. Um, tonight's homework is a little unusual. There's basically two problems that, uh, that I can help you with. And then the other problems are kind of multiple answer solution path kind of problems where um, it doesn't there isn't a single way of solving them. Um, so I'm going to do those two problems, the two problems that I think I can help you with, and I'm going to leave the ones that are a little more open-ended for you guys to work on. So let's take a look at problem number one. Problem number one says, Ren makes some rectangular display boxes. Ren's first display box is six inches long, nine inches wide, and four inches high. What is the volume of the display box? Explain your work using a diagram. Well, let's see. I want to try to do a diagram first because we've drawn the read part of our read, draw, and write strategy. So let's go ahead and try to do the drawing. Let's see. We need something that is four inches high, okay, we need it six inches long, all right, so got four inches high and six inches long and then nine inches wide, wow, okay, so it goes way back, so I'm going to say there, there's our diagram, so this is six inches long, four inches high, nine inches wide. What's the volume of our display box? Oh, okay, well that's easy, we've remembered our volume formula and so we're going to have our length, which is six inches times our, our width, which is 9 inches, times our height, which is 4 inches, and we're going to get our volume that way. Let's see, so four, 6 times 9 is 54 square inches times 4 inches, and let's see, I think I can do that as mental math because 4 times 50 would be 200, and then 4 times 4 would be 16 more, so I think that's 216 cubic inches. Let's see, the volume is 216 cubic inches. And I think our diagram really helps us there, right? Let's reread. Six inches long, yep, right here. Oh, I should probably put my units in there, right? Six inches long, nine inches wide, nine inches wide, and four inches high. Sure enough, four inches high. And then our volume formula, six times nine times four, we can do these in any order, but I chose to do 6 times 9 first, and then multiply by 4. Remember that our units are cubic inches, and we've done the right part of our read, draw, and write strategy. I think we're done. Okay, now problem 2 is a different kind of a problem, right? It's a more open-ended problem about how you can solve this in any number of ways. So I'm going to let uh, you solve that. That's about how Jeffrey wants to do his planters. I'm sorry, how Ren wants to do her planters. So we'll let you solve that problem in your own way. Let's take a look at problem number 3. Problem number three says, Ren wants to build a box to organize her scrapbook supplies. She has a stencil set that is 12 inches wide that needs to lie flat on the bottom of the box. The supply box must also be no taller than two inches. Name one way she could build a supply box with a volume of 72 cubic inches. Hmm, interesting. So I kind of want to draw another diagram. Let's see, we know how wide this is. So, and so we don't really know how long the box is but we know how wide it is. It's 12 inches wide. And we know it can't be any more than two, two inches tall, right? So we know that it's gonna be 12 inches wide and no more than two inches tall. So one of the ways that I could think of this, I, I really thought of two different ways of doing this. One of them is, well, we've, we've been able to slice sections of this off before. So this whole face looks like it's going to be 2 times 12 inches or 24 square inches, right? That, that's this face. I'm going to shade that in red, right? One section of this. One section of this here is going to be 24 cubic inches, right? Let's see. So how many of those 24 cubic inches inch sections could we stack back here to get to exactly 72? In other words, 24 plus 24 plus 20 plus how many 24s would it, get, would it take to get us to 72? And I think the answer is just one more 24. I think that would do it, right? 24 plus 24 plus 24 equals 72, right? Yeah. So I think what we're saying here is one of these sections that's one inch wide would give us 24 cubic inches, right? And if we did another one here, 
another one, kind of like we did in lesson two, I think, two or three. Another section there would give us another 24, and then a third section would give us another 24, and that means that this could be three inches wide. Now, would that make sense? With something that's three inches by 12 inches by two inches, yeah, that would be three times two is six, times 12 is 72. That would do it. So that's one way of solving our problem. Another way of solving our problem is to say, well, let's see. We know one, we know the, the width, it's 12 inches. We know the height, two inches. We do not know the length, right? So I'm just gonna put a big L there for length. And that we know that we're trying to get to 72 cubic inches. So really, we have kind of a mystery value. How many inches is this? And if we went ahead and did our math here, 24 square inches times 12 equals 72 cubic inches, right? We still have a mystery. Now we could maybe solve this with mental math. And with mental math, we could say what number times 24 would give us 72? And we might be able to do that mentally and just say, hey, you know what? I think that's three. And in fact, it is. But we also might be able to say, you know what? In every multiplication problem, there is a division problem, right? Instead of taking the product of 24 and L and and getting our result, which is 72, right? Our two factors, 24 and L, and our product is 72, we could take this as our dividend, 72, divided by either one of the factors, in this case, let's say 24, that would give us the length, right? 72 divided by four. Just as we can do, uh, it, it, we remember these as inverse operations, right? Multiplication, we can do this multiplication to get this product, or we can take that product as the dividend, take either one of the factors as a divisor, and get our quotient. And in fact, if we divide 72 by 24, we could do the division on the side, we're gonna get three. So I think there are at least two or three different ways we can solve this problem for Ren. Whether we do it through a diagram, whether we do it through some mental math, whether we slice a chunk of this off and say how many slices can we have, whether we do this problem where we have a sort of um, a missing factor in a multiplication problem which we turn into a division problem. I think there are a variety of ways that we can solve that problem for Ren. All right. Well, thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. I'll see you again next time. Take care.